I've said before that if you support the Second Amendment and if you want to maintain the right uh, to keep and bear arms for yourself and for your children, that you need to support Democratic candidates and you need to vote for Democratic candidates. The Constitution guarantees the right to keep and bear arms and therefore you need to go with the political party that still regards the Constitution as something that actually exists rather than something that can just be run roughshod in order to, uh, in order to install an autocratic uh, leader. There's, there's a lot of reasons that people may be hesitant to purchase a gun. The first and foremost, as far as I can see, is that 60% of gun deaths are suicides. Now you can say, oh, well, that's not me that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing pretty well and feel good about life. And, but here's the trick. That's how you feel now. How will you feel in seven years? Where will you, what, what sort of life will you be living in 15 years, in 40 years? I know what type of life I'll be living. I'll be living six feet under. Um, but you, you guns, once you purchase them, never wear out. They never go away. They are always there. Of that 60% of people who uh, either kill themselves or attempt to kill themselves, and the attempts are often far more horrible than the successes, uh, most of those are white men uh, doing that. And most of those white men are in economically depressed rural areas. Um, this is not an issue of freedoms. This is an issue of the gun manufacturers want to, wanting to sell more product. And the problem with selling more guns, as I say, is that guns never wear out. I've, I've had this shirt I don't know how long, but sooner or later it's going to wear out and I'm going to throw it away. Guns, that doesn't happen. They will last in your household forever. Uh, guns are simple, simple mechanisms. So that's the first reason. Uh, two thirds of uh, gun deaths and gun violence is uh, either suicides or attempted suicides. And most of the attempts are successful because guns are designed to be efficient uh, for killing people. There's, uh, well, then you have, you know, what about the people who shoot other people? The great majority of those people, people are shooting people they know. People are shooting family members. I remember <laughs> I moved down to a county in Kentucky. Beautiful, beautiful area in the knobs. Absolutely beautiful. Get up in the morning. Sometimes there'd be tur wild turkeys in the backyard. Just gorgeous. Right off the Daniel Boone National Forest. As I was moving, Paul Harvey was on the radio, if you remember Paul Harvey. And um, he, was, he was saying, there's one place to go if you want to get away with murder. And he named the, count, he named the county I was moving to in Kentucky. Um, uh, and th then he said, but it's always family members killing family members. And I thought, well, I'm safe. I'm moving in. I'm brand new moving into this area and I don't have a soul and none of my family lives here. Um, it, people kill uh, people that they know accidentally. People often kill people with whom they're having arguments very, very intentionally. Um, uh, husbands kill wives. Uh, siblings kill siblings. It's very easy to do. With a, with a firearm. And um, uh, people kill people accidentally. Oh, I didn't know that's who it was. Um, so that, that takes up a large percentage. And of course, uh, not a huge percentage, but at the same time, not negligible is policemen shooting people. Um, they have to protect themselves and we hope and we want it to be that all those shootings are justified uh, because it's a scary world to live in, uh, that they are often not justified. But the reason people purchase guns is often, oh, I need to protect my home and family. The number of times 
that I, a, uh, uh, I, uh, a robber comes into the house unknown to the family um, and they, they sneak in at a window and the uh, husband gets up and grabs his gun and protects his family and either kills the nasty robber or, or, or threatens him and the robber runs. That, now that is statistically insignificant. Uh, great majority suicides. After that, uh, people killing people that they know, uh, sometimes know very well, and uh, uh, very, very, uh, much, much less than 1%, uh, the people who are actually using them for household protection. Remington uh, and gun manufacturers came into their own during the Civil War. But after the Civil War, they had a problem. Uh, the nation didn't need guns to that extent. And here they had this huge infrastructure for gun manufacturers. Uh, and uh, Remington tried to move over to sewing machines. But sewing machines are hard to make and maintain. Making a good sewing machine, uh, especially at the end of the 1800s, that's rough stuff. Uh, to do. Now, the technology was primitive. Um, although my wife has a treadle machine from a little, little bit after that, early 1900s, and she swears by it. Um, but it's harder to make a treadle machine or a sewing machine. It is easy as pie to make uh, a gun. And, but the problem, once again, is you can make them and you can sell them, but they don't wear out. It's not like you can say, well, here's the new model. You know, nobody's going to trade in their gun for the latest model. They're, it's not like a car that over four years is going to wear out and get rust all over it. The gun is going to uh, be kept wherever it's kept, and it's going to be like new for as long as the person lives. So they had to come up with a new idea, and that's to connect uh, firearms with somebody having a man card. You need to renew your man card. Um uh, and everybody knows that that's not what being a man is about. The men I know that are most worth calling men are men who've stood up to very difficult circumstances and, and have continued to care for their family and be faithful to their communities and their church. And just um, my children know <laughs> of whom I speak. <laughs> um it's, it's the same man I bring up every time. Um, there is no, there is no politician. There is no political party in the United States that is advocating to show up at your, at your house and take away your guns. Nobody is doing that. That is fear mongering from the IRA and the Republican right. Nobody, nobody. The only person who will advocate to that is your favorite person, uh, Putin. There is nobody in Russia who's allowed to own a gun, except for the people that Putin says can own a gun. Um, if you're looking for people who will take away your firearms, look at the authoritarian regimes that Trump loves so much. And that makes sense. If you want to have all the power and all the money, you can't have people carting guns around wherever they go. You have to take them away. But if you're looking for a party to make sure that the Constitution will be observed, then once again, we're looking at uh, Democrats. Um, but it, it sure seems to be the Republicans that are advocating for authoritarian and minority rule. And uh, in order to maintain that, they will have to come and actually take away all, uh, all your guns. Uh, uh, otherwise, it's just an NRA scare. There is no liberal anywhere who's threatening to come to your house and take away your guns. There, but everyone, the NRA and gun owners and, you know, nasty libs and conservatives, everybody agrees. Oh, shoot. There may be somebody somewhere who doesn't. But uh, a general truth that's very generally true is everyone agrees you have to draw the line somewhere. And I will add, there is no slippery slope. There is only the rule of law. In other words, 
Uh, Jeff Bezos is a wealthy person. If he wanted to, he can afford to buy, uh, well, build, uh, and maintain, I don't know, uh, a stable or a fleet of 40 or 50 uh, uh, intercontinental ballistic nuclear missiles with multiple entry uh, warheads. He, he can afford to do that. But we don't allow it. It is against the law. Uh, and there are, and and if you wanted to, you could have corporations with people pooling their money uh, to maintain six or seven ICBMs and keep them aimed at different federal offices so that you know nobody's gonna come and take away our you know whatever. Um, but we don't allow it. We have drawn the line there. I don't know where have we drawn the line. Uh, I suspect that if you go out to your front yard, build a pool, a pillbox, uh, and mount a modus, uh, there and keep it aimed at people as they walk by or at your nasty neighbors that you don't like, um, then I expect, you know, the line is probably drawn before that. Uh, I don't know if, you know, if you're allowed to have, uh, uh, RPGs. Uh, and are you allowed to keep uh, a thousand rounds for your RPGs uh, at your house? I don't know. Uh, I suspect not because we have drawn a line. The line that you draw is always, to a certain extent, arbitrary. We have decided, well, in some states it's 19-year-olds, in some states it's 21-year-olds, but there's an age of consent. Before that time, you get in a peck of trouble, uh, I suspect, uh, by soliciting sex from a person below that age. After that time, you don't. Now, what's the difference between the month before and the month after? Very often, very little. And some people before that time, are very able to make that decision. Some people do not have the maturity to make that decision for five years uh, after that. But we draw the line somewhere, and it seems a little arbitrary, but you have to draw the line somewhere. And so we do, uh, either the age uh, 19 or 21, depending on the state. It is not a slippery slope. It is the rule of law. The Nobody's saying, nobody, no, that is an NRA scare. Mm, they're going to come and take your guns away. Nobody is advocating for that. What everyone advocates for is that we have to draw the line. We're not going to let people have nuclear missiles. And you, you can have them. You can build them. Get, you know, uh, get a million people together. Have them each donate $500 and you can have uh, you know, $500 a month and you can have. Uh, I, I, you can maintain an ICBM uh, doing that, but uh, we say no, we're not going to, going to allow that. We draw the line. So the question is between the country having a conversation on where are you going to draw the line? Everyone agrees there needs to be a line. Everyone agrees that there needs to be a line. You know, there, there may be some people somewhere that say, yes, Jeff Bezos should be allowed to nuke, you know, I don't know, uh, something, uh, because he wants to, because he can afford to. Hmm. I suspect that the great majority of the United States says, no, I don't think we want people to be able to do that just because they can. And that is the discussion that needs to happen that is the discussion we've already had. There are laws. You can't, you can't have, you know, uh, uh, large gun emplacements. You can't get a howitzer and put it in your front yard and uh, aim it wherever you want to. It, it's, it's against the law. Uh, so where do we draw the line? And that's the discussion. That is exactly what uh, we have done and what we will continue to do.